everyone uh, who's joining us today. Welcome to today's CNCF webinar, Harbor, the Trusted Cloud Native Registry for Kubernetes. I'm Jeffrey Sika. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat and a CNCF ambassador. Uh, I'll be moderating today's webinar. Uh, we would like to welcome our presenter today, Michael Michael, maintainer of Harbor and co-chair of Kubernetes SIG Windows at VMware. A uh, few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to talk as an attendee. There is a Q&A box in the bottom of your screen. Feel free to drop your questions in there and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. This is an official uh, webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that Code of Conduct. Basically, please be respectful of all of your fellow participants and the presenters. Please note uh, the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF webinar page. Um, the URL will post in there, uh, but it is cncf.io slash webinars. Uh, with that, I'll hand it over to Michael to kick off today's presentation. Yeah, thank you so much for the introduction. And hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, depending, or, or good evening, depending of where you are in the world. There's a lot of things going on with Harbor lately, so I'm super excited to come here in front of all of you and kind of talk a little bit about uh, the latest news on Harbor, our latest release, and also give you a, a deep dive demo on some of the capabilities of Harbor. So let's uh, kick things off. I want to mention one thing. Uh, yeah, Q&A, please use the, uh, the Q&A that Zoom provides here. Uh, if, if I see the question as I'm talking about a specific topic, I'll interrupt myself and try to answer your question. Otherwise, I'll, I'll catch up later on. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, I'm assuming all of you should be able to see my screen uh, and we've turned off video so that would make it easier for uh, you guys to see a full view of the presentation. So we'll be talking about Harbor today, the trusted cloud native registry for Kubernetes. When we, when we kind of talk to users uh, about Harbor as well as the bigger community, a lot of things come up right at the beginning of that discussion. You know, what are some of the challenges that folks have uh, when managing your cloud native artifacts. Uh, when we kind of look at the landscape today uh, and the CNCF survey that came out for 2019, 2020, we saw one of the biggest jumps in the use of containers in production. Uh, the actual numbers were 15% to 84%. That's super dramatic, that's huge. It means that the technology is maturing. It means that more enterprises, more users are putting containers in production. Now, as the deployments are getting larger and more ubiquitous, uh, and the cloud native adoption is becoming mainstream, you also need a registry. You need a repository for all your cloud native assets. You can't really operate Kubernetes without a registry. So that makes Harbor a key ingredient in any cloud native environment. On top of that, according to Sysdic and their annual report, 52% of container images that are scanned by Sysdic have known vulnerabilities. Think about that number for a second, 52%. Now, if I'm an enterprise and a, or a user, what are some of the problems that I have thinking back around, I'm putting a lot of containers in production and a lot of them potentially could have vulnerabilities. Well, I want consistency of policy and access for my registry. I wanna know what my policies look like, how they're deployed, and I wanna know who has access to my registry, who has access to be able to push or pull images. I want a common way to describe that policy for consistency and security. That's really, I want to be able to enforce my compliance policies for my organization as they relate to my artifacts. And last and most important is, I want the peace of mind that when I'm deploying artifacts in production, they are free from vulnerabilities and secure before I push them to Kubernetes or any other container runtime. What is Harbor? Harbor is a cloud native computing foundation incubating project. We actually have 12,000 stars on GitHub, the common metric for uh, basically scaling and, and, and viewing projects today. And in a nutshell, Harbor is an open source registry that secures artifacts with policies and role-based access control. It ensures images are scanned and free from vulnerabilities and it signs images as trusted. Our mission as the Harbor project is to be the most secure, performant, scalable, and available cloud native repository for Kubernetes. And we do that by delivering compliance, 
performance and interoperability to help you consistently and securely manage artifacts for Kubernetes. That consistency and compliance and security are super key words in terms of how we view Harbor, our vision for the project, as well as how we develop the project. So let's take a look at some of our core tenets. You know, keeping in mind what I mentioned earlier, our vision is to give you that consistent image management for Kubernetes. We start by ownership and deployment. We give you the ability to deploy Harbor as a packaged offering on your own data center, on your own compute nodes. You get to own it. You get to integrate it with the existing tools and services that you have in your own data center. We give you multi-tenancy, and that is in two different modes. We give you role-based access control with a flexible model of defining users and their permissions. And we give you isolation at the project level. So every project can be tailored to the needs of the individual users that are going to be using that project. At the core of Harbor is policy. We can push images, we can pull images, we do all the standard things that registries do. But the most important thing that we enable is that policy. We give you the ability to create quotas. So you can don't allow any project to run away from you. Retention policies, so you can enforce compliance. For example, I don't want any image older than one year to be in my production repository. Immutability, don't allow anybody to override stable images. We're able to sign, so we use the notary capability from CNCF to allow you to sign images and verify provenance. And vulnerability, being able to set up your vulnerability policy in terms of what apps can be deployed in production from container images depending on if they have high, critical, medium, low vulnerabilities. At the security and compliance at the core is the identity and access management. Being able to federate your identity as a user from any uh, identity provider you own, whether that's DEX, uh, uh, Active Directory, or anything else. The ability to do scanning, so we can scan your images and verify their frame vulnerabilities. And the CVE exceptions, uh, and the ability, giving you the ability to create exceptions for certain CVEs that you don't have a solution for yet. The last tenet is extensibility. We need to be able to allow our users to deploy Harbor within your own infrastructure and make it compatible with existing investments in infrastructure and services. For example, you're using specific CICD tools. We need to be able to give you webhooks so you can integrate with those CICD tools or integrate the webhooks with reporting or, or configuration management databases. Give you replication so you can push and pull images from Harbor to any other uh, container registry. We'll give you pluggable scanners so you can bring your own static analysis scanner. And we're going to show you that to you in a demo later on. We have a full REST API. Anything that you can do in the user interface of Harbor, you can also do through an API. We have robot accounts, so you can do headless uh, configuration and executions against Harbor, like for example, in CICD and CLI secrets. So when you kind of look at this core schema, this is what we have been put down as stable table stakes in Harbor, and we're executing all our features and functionality against these tenants. Let's take a look at the Harbor architecture here for a second. This is a little bit of a busy slide, and I'm going to use my mouse here to kind of navigate that. Uh, in the middle, we have all the core capabilities of Harbor. Uh, Harbor can be deployed uh, using Docker Compose or a Helm chart. And essentially, Harbor consists of a number of services that can be individually scaled in a Kubernetes cluster that deliver the core functionality of Harbor, everything from configuration management, quotas, the signature manager, retention, notifications, replication, etc. So a collection of services build the foundation of what Harbor is and the different services that we have. Underneath that, we have our garbage collection controller, integration with Chart, Chart Museum, which up to our latest release, that is how you could push and pull Helm charts into Harbor. We have our integration with Notary for signing, and then Docker distribution for pushing and pulling uh, container artifacts. On the bottom layer is our data access. We have three data access capabilities uh, in Harbor. The first one is our key value storage, which is built on top of Redis. 
where you can deploy Redis standalone or in a highly available manner. We have our local or remote storage, which is where we actually store the artifacts. Anything you push and pull into Harbor goes into our remote storage or local storage. So it could be a persistent volume in Kubernetes, for example, it could be NFS based, uh, or it could be object storage. And last is the configuration management database for Harbor. This is where we collect and include our policy, our access permissions, role-based access control. I think everything that Harbor has in terms of the knowledge and the brain of Harbor goes into this Postgres database. On the left, we have our identity providers. We support Active Directory and LDAP, as well as OIDC. This is how you can federate your identity so that you don't have a different user model for your registry as, as compared to the rest of your tools and services in your organization. At the front, we have Nginx, which basically front ends our API routing as acts as a reverse proxy for Harbor. And then at the consuming side, we have a variety of tools that we support for interacting with Harbor. We have our web portal where you can view all the information for Harbor, do configuration management, be able to define, define and implement policy. And that's built on top of our API, uh, the REST API I mentioned earlier. Uh, the Kubelet from Kubernetes can push and pull artifacts from Harbor. We have our Helm integration so you can push and pull Helm charts. Have Docker and Notary client for being able to not only push and pull images, but also being able to sign them and configure the provenance of your images. And last, and this is new with our latest release, is Auras for being able to push and pull OCI compatible artifacts. Speaking about the integration of Harbor, you know, which is one of our key pillars, we have integrated with a variety of external tools and projects to enable both the replication and the scanning capabilities of Harbor. Let's take a look at replication here for a second. Harbor can define a replication where you can push or pull artifacts from Harbor and basically interact with the Docker distribution, Docker Hub, Huawei Cloud, Amazon, Google, Azure, Alibaba, Quay, Artifactory, GitLab. That list is huge. We started with just a couple of these replication providers, and then we've expanding the list with every single release of Harbor. Why do we do that? Because it's important to our users. They've told us that they want Harbor to be at the key and in the center of a hub and spoke model where Harbor can be in charge of the policy, Harbor can be in charge of scanning images for vulnerabilities, but then be able to push the images where they need to run. So for example, if you're running your workloads on Azure, you need to be able to scan your images in Harbor and then push them at the edge or at the region where Azure is running and have your images be locally available to your Kubernetes clusters. It's all about offering choice to our users. And the scanning providers, that's a new feature that shipped with Harbor 1.10 at the end of 2019. Essentially, we've created an engine that became a pluggable adapter engine where different security companies can come in and introduce their static analysis scanner into Harbor. So we've opened it up. It, we're all about extensibility or all about flexibility. If an organization is using, for example, Anchor Engine or Enterprise, and they would like that to be the scanner for their Harbor projects, they get to use that. If they're using Aqua Trivi, you have choice there as well. You want to use DoSec or CentOS, you can do that as well. And we're actually working with SysDIC right now so that we can enable their scanner as well. So let's take a look at some of the features and progress that Harbor has made up to version 2.0. And I want to specifically call it out stopping at 2.0 because I have a different slide for that. So what are the image retention policies? And I'm going to demo pretty much all of these capabilities later on. So image retention is the ability to say, hold an image for the last 90 days or keep only the latest 10 images in my Harbor project and delete everything else. Project quotas able to enforce a policy that says, don't allow any project to exist, exceed a terabyte of storage so that no user goes and uh, creates a situation you're, where you run out of disk space at your data tier. Webhook events, being able to be notified via HTTP callbacks if uh, 
an event happens in Harbor. For example, scanning completed, scanning failed, an image was uploaded, an image is, was deleted, and so on and so forth. Introducing new replication targets, what I've just mentioned earlier, we've been adding more and more replication targets so Harbor can interoperate with as many container registries out there as possible. CVE exception from policies will allow you the ability to define a CVE as an exception so that if the CVE is a critical vulnerability and it will prevent your image from being pulled, it would temporarily grant you permission to pull your image until um, you get the ability to fix the library that introduced the CVE, for example. Immutability, being able to define that an image as immutable. Don't change that image because it's important. It's my stable V2 release. I don't want anybody to ever update that. Pluggable scanners, kind of covered that a second ago. And the last is identity and access management improvements. We added OIDC group support in, in, uh, in 1.10. We added limited guest support in 1.10 as well, and many more. Which brings us to some of the hardware news. A couple of weeks ago, we shipped our latest release of hardware and probably one of the largest to date was hardware version 2.0. So we actually changed the major release from, from, from a semantic versioning perspective for hardware. We've revamped our website and we've worked very closely with the CNCF and, and Luke from that team to have a brand new website. So if you go to goharbor.io, you're going to notice a brand new website with built-in documentation into the website, including search making it easier for our users to find content and learn more about Harbor. We've released the Harbor operator about a month and a half ago. Uh, that was in collaboration with OVH Cloud, one of the public cloud providers in Europe. Uh, and it enabled the, the, basically the Harbor operator enables us to pave the way for lifecycle management for Harbor. Uh, we're not at version 1.0 yet, but we're working towards that. And eventually your goal is that you're going to get an all-in-one installation experience for Harbor, including high availability. So you're going to be able to deploy, scale, upgrade, delete Harbor. So uh, that provisioning alone is huge, let alone the ability to do full lifecycle management. So we're super excited about that and we look forward to, uh, to enhancements in the operator pattern that we've developed for Harbor. And then last but not least, Harbor is up for graduation in CNCF and the voting has already begun uh, on Tuesday, uh, May 26. And if you are a user of Harbor, if you're a contributor of Harbor and you love our project, go and put your vote of confidence uh, for the project. Let's take a look at Harbor 2.0 a little bit uh, more deeply here. The core functionality of the release has all been around OCI. So one of the key things that we wanted to enable is, before, Harbor only supported container images and Helm charts. And while that was sufficient for a huge percentage of our user base, it was not enough as the cloud native ecosystem is maturing. There's more and more artifacts that are being created and potentially have a need to be stored somewhere or policy can apply on top of them as well. And this is where OCI support comes in. It allows us to standardize on a single image format, which is OCI, so that all the registries that are OCI compliant can speak the same language in terms of the image format that they support. So by adding OCI compliance, now Harbor is able to support a wide variety of images, not just container images and home charts. I'm gonna show you that in a second. Aguas Trivi was one of the pluggable scanners that we released in version 1.10. We've worked with the Aqua team and we've been, we're super excited to announce that Aqua Trivi is now the default scanner in Harbor. So when you create a brand new project in Harbor and you're on Harbor 2.0, you're going to notice that Trivi is now the built-in batteries included default scanner for your projects. We're adding service to service SSL. There are Many of our users are concerned about security, man in the middle attacks, and they wanted us to enable certificate based SSL for all the core services of Harbor. If you think about that diagram I showed earlier that showed all the different components of Harbor and the services that, that basically define what the core 
functionality of Harbor is, now all those services can talk to each other in an encrypted fashion. Based on customer feedback, we added the ability for robot accounts to set an expiration now. I'm going to show you that to you in a demo later on too. And we've added, extended our support for CICD integration and automation with the ability to customize the triggers for webhooks as well as add Slack integration. So for the folks that are using Slack as the, as the, as the means to be notified and perform work and communicate with their teams, now you can receive your webhooks in Slack. What are the additional things like tag improvements and UI dark mode based on uh, customer feedback? And you know the, the list is endless. But if we kind of look at the high level, Harbor 2.0 has only been about OCI, OCI, OCI. Let's take a look at the OCI support for a second. You know we went from Docker images and home charts to full OCI now. So now we support Docker images, we support home charts, we support Cena bundles. We support open policy agents, support singularity. But in essence, anything you can bundle into an OCI and by using the OCI format and the index can be pushed into Harbor. Now, that doesn't mean that, that all those artifacts will be able to take full advantage of all of the feature set of Harbor, but you can at least utilize some of them. For example, our policies around quotas and retention. Um, and for some of those images, our scanning and security policies those apply as well. So this is key. You went from two image formats that we supported in container images and home charts, and now we've expanded the ecosystem while still taking advantage of the harbor policy that our users have, have, have been loving so far. Now, the important thing here is that as OCI continues to advance its support, Harbor will be able to go along for the ride so the industry standard here that defines both the image spec and the runtime specification, whether you're using Harbor as your container registry or something else will apply. We're all speaking the same language here. Kind of taking a look at here at the OCI index Docker manifest list. I, I don't want to go too much in detail here, but the key thing I want to show you here is that Harbor can crack open it's OCI index and Docker manifest list. It can understand your configuration for your digest, the different layers that you have for in your image and what the manifest looks like. So this is important. We can understand that. And more importantly, uh, very likely in either the next or the next two releases of Harbor, we're gonna allow end users to be able to even push their own metadata for specific OCI artifacts. So we can understand even more artifacts uh, beyond Cina bundles and singularity and, and things that are, that are commonly available. So for example, if you wanted to push mach machine learning or AI artifacts into Harbor, you could also push your own manifest and metadata that describes those and Harbor can understand that. We're trying to do that in a plugin interface way and we're working with the community to identify the best way to enable that. And I want to talk a little bit about Trivi as well before we deep dive into the demo. So Trivi, like I mentioned, is now the default scanner in Harbor. The reason why we made Trivi the default scanner is because it aligns very well with our vision in Harbor. Um, you know, it's a simple, comprehensive, very fast vulnerability scanner. It has significant OS package support. So it can support everything from Alpine to Red Hat Universal Base Image, uh, RHEL, Enterprise Linux, uh, CentOS, Oracle Linux, Debian, Ubuntu, Photon OS, you name it, uh, Amazon Linux, it has support for all of those, even distroless. It has significant application dependency scanning from Bundler, Composer, NPM, Yarn, Cargo, and others. And it can even do deep scanning where it analyzes not only the top layer, but also the middle layers to find libraries and versions so they can do their static linking. So we've gotten tremendous feedback from the community that they love Trivi after 1.10 when we had it as a pluggable scanner that it was important for us to make this the default scanner. Now, if you're using Claire today, it doesn't mean that Claire goes away. Claire continues to ship with Harbor. So now we ship both Claire and Trivi as the two scanners in Harbor. It's just that Trivi is now the default. If you're upgrading from a previous installation of Harbor where Claire was the default, you will not be affected. We're not changing that experience for you. 
All right, and it's demo time, but first there's a few questions here. Let me see if I can answer them before I switch to the demo. Is it possible, uh, one of our users is asking, is it possible to integrate third-party vulnerability scanners into Harbor? Um, the answer is yes. So uh, today we have Anchor Enterprise and Engine. We have Aqua Trivi as well as CSP. We have DUSEC. Uh, we're working with SysDig to integrate their own vulnerability scanner. And then obviously Claire, which was our first vulnerability scanner in Harbor as well. So as we're working with more of the community, uh, around the security scanners out there for container images. We're going to introduce more capabilities in that arena. Uh, this is a pluggable model, so all those scanners ship out of band of the core harbor capabilities. Next question is, do you support XAML for auth? Uh, can I use Oracle DB instead of Postgres? Uh, we only support Postgres today. Uh, but if any of our customers is interested in using a different uh, Postgres compatible database, uh, please join our community meetings. Let's discuss your use cases. Let's see if we can get support from the bigger community. And, and if you're also interested in coming and helping us deliver that, maybe you can do that. Um, uh, we do support uh, XAML for Auth and uh, through our uh, Identity Federation. However, the one important thing that I want to mention is that when you're authenticating into Harbor, you cannot put claims or entitlements um, uh, into that authentication. So our identity integration is just auth. No, um, it's just authentication, no authorization. So Harbor depends on its own RBAC model for that. Is it possible to get uh, results of a security scan outside of Harbor? Yes, so you can get some of the scanning results through the webhook integration, as well as the API. So Harbor has a full-blown API where you can get the scanning results for individual uh, artifacts. Can I scan Windows-based images? Um, there are pluggable scanners out there that are working on being able to scan Windows-based images. Uh, I believe Aqua on their uh, enterprise solution is working on that. They might even have it ready, uh, but none of the open source scanners support Windows images as far as I know today. Yes, we do handle multi-architecture images. This is a key capability of Harbor to the dough. Uh, another question is, how do you handle vulnerabilities tied to a specific process or architecture? The vulnerabilities are tied to the actual image. Uh, so, uh, if the, the the vulnerabilities are tied to a specific uh, architecture uh, implementation of your image that includes certain libraries, um, then you'll, the vulnerabilities will be shown on that image specifically. Question is, Harbor garbage collection takes a long time, especially when we see terabytes of images. Do you guys know any support in that direction? If you don't mind, I'll answer that towards the end because we're working on something like that. Uh, and another question is, do you support externalizing Redis, Postgres, S3 as part of Harbor installation? Absolutely, if you use our Helm chart deployment, uh, there are opportunities to uh, bring your own Redis, Postgres, or S3 in a highly available fashion. So you can have a fully uh, distributed uh, as well as uh, as well as segmented installation of Harbor uh, that includes AJ deployments of these tools in a, in, in a separate cluster even, or even a separate uh, data center. How does replication without container registries work? Uh, I will show you that in a second. Essentially, we, uh, we create a provider model where Harbor connects to the other container registry, and we can either push or pull artifacts from that uh, other registry. We, the question around logging, do you log repository usage? Yes, there are quite a bit of uh, logging in Harbor in terms of usage, push, pull, deletions, uh, as well as with our webhooks, you, you're able to get a lot of insight into uh, what's happening. Um, but, you know, we, we will always continue improving our auditing capabilities here because we feel that we can do better. Question is, do you support more than 10 gigabytes of an image? Um, 
I don't know if anybody has tried to push a 10 gigabyte image on Harbor. I'm fairly confident it should work if your client that you're using to push it supports it. For example, you're using Docker client to push a 10 gigabyte image or Auras, then it should work in Harbor. Uh, feel free to try it out. If there are any issues, just let us know. As far as through our testing so far, we haven't seen any problems. Um, there's a couple more questions here that I'll try to answer later on so that in the interest of time. So let's switch to the demo here really quickly. I'm going to walk you through guys, through all uh, Harbor and then, um, and then I'll get back to some of the questions that I can answer as, as I'm giving the demo. So the first thing I want to show you guys is check this out. You know, dark mode, brand new feature in Harbor 2.0. So now you are able to see uh, uh, for, for the folks that are, are, are wants an interface that's a little bit easy on the eyes, you can enable dark mode. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to switch to light mode because I think it just demos a little bit easier when we're sharing my screen here. So uh, changing this to light mode. So uh, I'm going to try to do a very quick deep dive across every facet of Harbor, and hopefully that's going to answer some of the questions that have been coming up. So the first thing I'm going to show you is let's go into the administration of Harbor. Uh, over here, we have our set of users. Uh, in this case, I'm using the default uh, um, uh, user store for Harbor, which is the database. In this case, our user store is in the Postgres database. But I could have used OIDC or LDAP or Active Directory as my integration. Uh, in this case, I can create a new user. I can provide the username, uh, password, and some of the comments here. And then I can create a new user in Harbor. If I was using Identity Federation, um, I wouldn't have that need. I can set any of these users as an administrator, and that makes them a global administrator in Harbor. Here we have our registries. Here's some of the questions that are coming around replication. If I want to replicate Harbor with another container registry, I have to first create an endpoint. So in this case, I can create the endpoint. I can set what the provider is. I leave Cloud, AWS, Azure, Docker, all of those integrations I mentioned earlier. Once you define that, you give it a name. So in this case, it might be my Ali uh, Docker instance, for example. I give it a description. I provide an endpoint URL. I provide an access ID, a secret. And, a, and, and if, I, if basically it's using SSL, I can verify the remote cert. And that's it. I can create my integration. Now go ahead and create one right now. Um, but I'm going to show you a couple that have already been created. So in this case, we have another Harbor instance that's acting as the additional registry endpoint. So you see the credentials and the secret here. And then we also have a Docker distribution here that's acting as the replication endpoint for Harbor. Looking at the replications, this is where you actually get to create the replication rule. So in this case, I can create a new replication rule. So I can call it rule one. And you get to figure out if you want your replication to be push-based or pull-based. Do you want Harbor to pull images or push? And you get to define the source filter. What do you want to replicate here? You get to specify the names, the tags, the labels, uh, and then the type of resource, if it's an image, chart, or artifact. So now you get to tell Harbor, here's the parameters of what I want you to push or pull from this other registry that you create this. And then the destination registry here, I get to pick either the Docker Hub registry that I created or the other Harbor instance. And then I also get to pick the namespace of where we're going to push things into. So let's take a look at one of the uh, changes I have here. So I'm going to take a look at the hello replication rule here. It's targeting the Docker Hub distribution. It's going into a library called Hello World and getting the latest image from there. Very simple. You can make this as complicated or as simple as you need based on the needs of your organization so you can push and pull images into Harbor. Next thing I want to show you is Project Codas. This is a new feature as of our last couple of releases where you can define an upper boundary of the storage restriction that you want to implement on a per project basis. So in this case, I can come in and edit the library and say, I would like to define that the library can exit, cannot exit more than one gigabyte of storage, for example. And once I define that, 
Harbor will ensure and enforce that my library stays within the boundary of one gigabyte. And right now it's using about 20 megs. So I'm in no fear of exceeding that number, but in an organization where you want to set boundaries, this is super, super important. Interrogation services is where basically uh, some of the questions earlier from the chat came up. Here's where we have all the scanners that this particular hardware installation supports. I have Trivi and Claire, and I can expand each of them and it will tell me where Trivi is deployed, the schema that, that we support here, the version that is, and who the vendor is that created it. Um, I have the endpoint here, which is Trivi-adapter A443, and it's healthy, it's enabled, and in this case, I'm not using any authorization means. Uh, Claire is also deployed, just like I mentioned earlier, with no removing Claire. But I can add a new scanner. So if I created uh, a new scanner, or for example, I'm using Anchor, and I want Anchor to be my default scanner, I can deploy that. And we have extended sync documentation on how to deploy each, of this, each one of these scanners. And then once I deploy it, I can provide the details here, add it to Harbor, and then immediately um, that will be available for my projects to use. On the vulnerability side, we basically indicate when the database was last updated because that's an important aspect of these scanners. And then you can define a schedule-based uh, scanning so that artifacts can be scanned daily, hourly, weekly, depending on the needs of your organization. Garbage collection. So today, garbage collection can be scheduled so that uh, it can run daily, weekly, or ad hoc. And we've added an extension here where garbage collection can also delete untagged artifacts. These are artifacts that don't have a tag today. I think of them almost as orphaned in Harbor. Now, the important thing here is that we understand that a lot of users are mentioning that garbage collection today takes a long time and your repository is also locked uh, where um, it's not available for, for pushing new images. We are working uh, on enabling, uh, in the next release of Harbor, the ability to do online garbage collection without downtime. This is an important component that, that's basically going to become uh, possible only because of the fact that now Harbor tracks all the layers in all the artifacts in our database. So we no longer depend on an external tool like the Docker distribution to track the layers, but we track them internally in Harbor. So that means that we can actually enable you to push and pull artifacts without impacting the garbage collection that's happening behind the scenes because Harbor has full control over that process now. We're working on that and hopefully the 2.1 release at the end of the summer will have that. And the last component here as an administrator is our configuration. So um, we have the authentication mode and right, like I mentioned in this specific installation is database, but it could be OIDC or, or, or LDAP Active Directory. And then we have some of our system settings, essentially, you know, hey, who can create projects in Harbor? Everyone or only administrators? Like, do you wanna delegate the ability for end users of Harbor to create their own projects? You know, tokens should expire after what timeline? How about robot accounts? What's the default? token expiration. Um, I'm using SSL in this case. Can I download the root certificate so that I can actually make SSL calls? Um, and then the last part is the CVE whitelist, and I'm going to show that to you when we go into the project. But certain of my images might have CVEs that there's no solution for them. I want to create a CVE whitelist so that those CVEs don't impact my vulnerability policy that says, any image with high or above vulnerability should not be pulled. So I can add CV, CVEs to the whitelist here and even include an expiration date for when they should be removed. So after that date, the CV whitelist no longer applies and I better have a fix for those libraries. Let's take a look at the projects now. So we've talked a lot about management and operations so far. Let's take a look at the projects. This gives me a full dashboard view of all the projects in Harbor. And I'm gonna deep dive into my library project here that has one repository, a few home chairs, and, and, and a few other things. So just coming here from like, uh, from an initial view, I get to see this registry certificate. So since I've enabled SSL in this hardware installation, 
I get to download the certificate that I can install locally on my machine so I can make calls whether using Auras or the Docker client against this Harbor installation. And we also give you a helpful push command. So if I wanna see all the different commands for tagging and pushing artifacts here, I get to copy them so that it makes it easy for me to, uh, uh, to kind of uh, either give it to someone else or copy and paste these commands and run them on, on my CLI. Let's take a look at our artifacts here. So we have a few artifacts here. And uh, the important thing is I would try to kind of give you a view of all the different things that Harbor supports today. You get Docker images here. You see the nice little Moby icon here. Docker images here as well. A Docker image here that has, uh, that's basically built on OCI index and it has an artifact list here. So notice here, multi-architecture image, ARM, and AMD64. And in this case, AMD64 has some vulnerabilities, while the ARM one does not. So that was one of the questions that someone asked earlier. Then we have a Helm chart. Now Helm charts can be deployed in two ways in Harbor 2.0, using the Charts Museum, which I'm gonna show you in a second, or using OCI. So now Helm charts are considered artifacts. So I can click on my Helm chart here and uh, I can see an overview of, of, the, of the Helm chart, uh, the values that are defined here as part of the, of the Helm chart itself. And then I can see the different tags that have been created for this. And we also have Cina bundles. So here, let me open up the OCI index here for the Cina bundle. So um, if you are a fan of the cloud native application bundles, then you get to push them and pull them in Harbor as well. And now, not only do we support all these artifacts, but for the cases where it's supported, we also give you the ability to do vulnerability scanning on all of these artifacts and give you results. So in this case, I'm seeing that I have one high, three medium, one low vulnerabilities for this uh, Cina bundle identified by the SHA on the left side. So a couple of other things, I can copy a pull command here. So again, giving you uh, ease of use. So if you wanna pull uh, something from Harbor, easily can copy that. I will give you the tags that are on each one of these images, the size, vulnerabilities like I mentioned earlier, and when it was pushed, and as well as pull time, the latest times. Going back, I also have some of, uh, we also have the integration with Chart Museum that we wanna deprecate over time. But right now you get to see all of your home charts here. And again, you are able to see some of the same details that we saw earlier. When I drill into a home chart, I get to see the summary as well as some of the values that the home chart has identified. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this home chart. I'm gonna show you that to you in a second why I did that. So let's go ahead and delete MariaDB home chart. Um, and remember that in a second. So now we have members. So this is where the role-based access control for the project kicks in. Each project is fully isolated uh, in a multi-tenant way and can have its own users as well as permissions. So for every user that you add to this project, you get to identify the role, project admin, master, developer, guest, limited guest. And you might ask, hey, what do all these roles mean? Well, let me actually take advantage of two things that we have. First thing, I'm gonna to go to goharbor.io and these are brand new spanking website. I can click on documentation here. So I'm gonna to go to the documentation for 2.0. I'm gonna do a search here for user permissions. So you wanna find out what the user permissions look like. I do a search here and here's the user permissions per role for every one of the roles in Harbor. So you wanna find out who can see a list of project replication jobs? Well, only the project admin. So make it easy for you to identify what the RBAC permissions look like in Harbor. Then we have the scanner. Each project can choose its own scanner uh, based on the needs of the project. So for example, in this case, I'm using Trivi, which is the default scanner, but I could change that to Claire and say, hey, I wanna use Claire for scanning of this project from now on. Again, user choice based on your business and organizational needs and getting into the policy. This is where things start getting fun. Um, I wanna be able to say and create a rule that says, for all my repositories in this project, I want you to retain all the artifacts that were pushed within the last 90 days. Very powerful. 
I want to basically say, hey, for compliance reasons, I cannot have images at older than 90 days. So go ahead and delete them. Your choice in terms of how you define the rule and the root semantics give you a lot of flexibility in terms of how to create that. And if you want to basically define the retention based on most recently pushed, most recently pulled, number of days, or always retaining. We also have, to have tag immutability. Like I mentioned, you might be able to say, you might want to say, don't go and update an image after it's been tagged as stable. So now I can create a rule that says for the repositories matching star, tags matching stable, mark them as immutable. So that means that when I mark those, oops, sorry, I meant to do edit. When I mark something as immutable, nobody can update it, nobody can delete it. So I have to go and forcefully uh, change the immutability rule for me to be able to change those images. Very powerful for, for some uh, organizations where compliance is key. We have our robot accounts. And these are very useful for CICD. So I want to create a new robot account, for example. In this case, we're going to call him demo one. And I'm going to set an expiration date of tomorrow. And the description is demo robot account. And I get to define some permissions for it. Do you want to be able to push and pull artifacts or Helm charts? In this case, I'm only going to allow them to pull. So it only has permissions to pull images for CICD. I'm going to save it. And now I get a JWT token that I can save for interacting with uh, Harbor in the context of this project only with a robot account that has pull permissions only. Webhooks. Um, this is a critical component of basically interoperating Harbor with other components in the infrastructure. So now I can create a new webhook and I get to define a name. I get to individually pick the webhooks that are of interest to me, create an endpoint URL, and Harbor will make sure that it pushes all of the uh, webhooks that are relevant based on my configuration to the endpoint I created. In this case, I actually have this, uh, this webhook site that I created. And I want to show you here that earlier I deleted the home chart. And here's the webhook that I received for it because I've subscribed to the delete chart webhook. So now once I deleted the MariaDB webhook, I got back a notification that shows you uh, that I deleted it. So you can do uh, either reporting based on this, update configuration management database, drive execution action through another tool or kick off a workflow or anything else. The last part of the project is the final policy around content trust and vulnerabilities. When you say I want to enable content trust, you and extract Harbor to only allow verified images to be deployed. Or you, only, you instruct Harbor to prevent vulner, vulnerable images from running if they have high or critical, for example, severity. And I also want to scan images only immediately on push. And on top of that, I can also define two CVEs. Oops, I clicked on that by accident. That Harbor has been instructed to ignore in terms of as a, as a whitelist from the policy above, giving you flexibility in terms of defining your vulnerability policies within your infrastructure. Let me go ahead and show you one cool neat thing now. Now the support of CI, that means that I can actually push and pull pretty much anything in Harbor. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new blob of five megabyte size. So, so I'm, I'm using Windows, so I'm using FSUtil here. So now I have a, a file called blob.img, which is five megs. And it's just basically, there's nothing really in it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and, and push it into this instance of Harbor. So, oops, sorry. I pushed it to the wrong instance of Harbor. I'm gonna go ahead and push this to the, this instance of Harbor. So, um, Oh, it's forbidden. Did I do something wrong here? It is possible that I did something wrong, but what did I do? Well, this is a quota protected uh, uh, repository. And let's go to our project quotas here. And you're gonna notice here that the quota project is set to one megabyte. Well, it's understandable that that fell. So let me go ahead and update my, my quota here to 10 megabytes. And I'm going to go ahead and, 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 and push my image now. And I was able to push it. So now going back to my projects, and let's go to the Coda Protected project. You're going to notice now that I have a new large artifact that I just pushed. 
and it understands it's an OCI artifact and it's a five, size five megabytes and tag is V1. Uh, so look at that. If you have any, pretty much anything that you want to push into Harbor and you want to support uh, the ability to wrap it into an OCI uh, index and push it as an, as an OCI artifact, you can use Auras. So that means that now you can add more and more artifacts into Harbor and it gets to use some of the policies that Harbor has like quotas, which I just showed you. Now I can even add a tag and I'm gonna create a tag called demo tag. Uh, actually, let's call it new tag. So now I've created a new tag for my image and I can pull, I mean, I can pull the same artifact now from Harbor using the new tag. So now I can actually do an Auras pool using the new tag and Harbor just pulls pull back my digest and if I do DIR, there's my blob to the image. So expanding the horizon, expanding your ability of doing cool things with Harbor. And this kind of concludes the demo. So I wanna take some time now to answer the rest of the questions for the seven minutes that are left. So uh, the first question that we haven't answered yet, do you support replication with node design? And I wanna answer that by going back to my slides. So uh, looking back at the, at the Harbor roadmap, some of the things that we wanna enable uh, moving forward is improving the Kubernetes operator, uh, something that I mentioned earlier, but we also wanna do signing policy replication. Today, when you sign an image in Notary, that signing signature does not survive when you replicate an image from one provider to the other. We're working with the upstream Notary V2 effort to make sure that the signing policy gets replicated along with your images and it's not tied to a single instance of Notary. And when that's available upstream, we will also support it in Harbor. Garbage collection, I mentioned that earlier, we're gonna do better around being able to do online GC. Our next release, Harbor 2.1, is very much tied to image distribution. That's kind of the theme of our release. We wanna enable proxy caching capabilities, as well as integration with peer-to-peer -peer distribution mechanisms like Dragonfly and Kraken. And we'll also continue doing identity and access management enhancements, enhancements in our interrogation services, and so on and so forth. Harbor has a huge, huge roadmap ahead of us. We have a tremendous community that supports us. And I wanna show you some of the community statistics here because it, they're super relevant here. And uh, and we look forward to improving Harbor for you over the next uh, next uh, <laughs> releases. So uh, I don't wanna go through all these details, but this is a super powerful community that we have in Harbor. Lots of maintainers, a ton of members, GitHub stars, PRs, Twitter followers, webinars, uh, contributing companies, huge, huge community. It's thriving. Come here and be part of it. Let me see what other questions I can answer here. Uh, I have lots of questions coming in. Is there commercial support available for Harbor? Um, there are some companies, uh, VMware in particular, that are offering commercial support for Harbor as part of our, uh, the Kubernetes distributions that they're offering. Uh, if you're interested in that, uh, find me on Slack in private, M2 is my alias, and we can chat about that. What are some of the best practices for backup restore of Harbor platform plus images? Um, you can actually use Velero, uh, Project Velero, that, uh, that's an open source project to uh, backup and restore the entire Harbor installation that includes your persistent volumes, it includes the configuration of Harbor and different components, as well as, you know, if you want to do Redis, Postgres, uh, backup as well. There were two questions on that. Um, do you support replication for both image and charts? I kind of answered that through a demo. It's images, charts, or artifacts. Uh, all three uh, can be supported as long as the other end of the replication also supports us. For example, if the replication uh, target does not support OCI, you cannot replicate OCI. Uh, there's a question here. I'm a big fan of Harbor. I got to move a lot of images from data Docker registers to Harbor. I wanted to know a little bit more about Harbor replication. Uh, how does it work under the hood? I'll, you know, a great way to learn about that. Please attend our community meetings. We'd love to. Uh, we have a few folks that are super passionate about that. Uh, join our meeting and we'd love to talk to you more about that. Uh, it's a great topic. We have some of it documented on our documentation, but join our meeting. We'll, we'll give you all the uh, down and dirty. 
I don't think I'm going to be able to answer all these questions by the time we have left. Uh, there's a no, ton of probably not. Yeah, I, I would of... say uh, keep it to like one or two more. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's do a couple more. Um, so is there a timeline for the home chart for the Harbor 2 release? Uh, it should be any day now uh, by the end of this week. So by hopefully by tomorrow, you'll be able to... Uh, um, uh, to, to get the home chart for, for Harbor to the dough. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm putting up the slide here in terms of how to connect with the Harbor team, uh, whether that's on Slack, on mailing list, Twitter, or attend our community meeting. I want to share the slides. You'll be able to uh, get access to all of those ways to connect with our team. Can I create custom roles or change pre-existing roles? Uh, no, today there are back roles uh, and the permissions that this role is, uh, is, is fixed and defined in Harbor. Uh, we are looking in the future on how we can actually use OPA to define uh, uh, the, the, the role-based access control, but we're not there yet. Uh, if anybody's interested in coming and helping us deliver that, uh, we'll love that. Uh, one more question. All right. Um, could you please repeat what Ora's client is? Uh, I'll make that very easy. So I'm going to go over here and, you know, uh, Ora's was, uh, was created by this. So if you search for Ora's this here, it will point you to the uh, OCI registry as storage, which is what Ora stands for. And there's a GitHub link for downloading Ora's for the different uh, architectures like Windows, Linux, Mac. Awesome. Uh, Thanks, Michael. That was an awesome, great presentation. Um, that's all the time we have for questions today. Uh, thank you for joining us. The webinar recording and slides will be online later today. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you at future CNCF webinar. Have a great day. Thank you. And if we didn't answer your question, come on Slack, ask it again. Our team will answer it there. Awesome. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you.